How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is, um, man, I've been trying to keep up with the days and everything, but they all be running together. And today is, uh, I know it's Sunday. It's Sunday, September something. Um, 19th, 20th, so y'all know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'll tell y'all a quick story before I get to the point I really want to make. Um, I didn't plan on making this video. I was working on another sermon, but I had got sick earlier. Man, lesson learned for my wife and myself, because we, we didn't know this. Um, so my wife usually makes smoothies for breakfast that we usually have. And my wife had one of some driving jobs because she is an independent contractor uh, for Spark, which do deliver groceries for Walmart and stuff like that. Um, Y'all know I was doing that, and now she's taking taking it over and is doing it more because I'm focused on the real estate thing. But it was myself, my two children, and my mother-in-law. We was all up, and you know I was talking to my mother-in-law and stuff like that, and. Abraham, he threw up. Abraham usually don't throw up. Um, then he threw up again. So we just thought maybe he had something that went down the wrong tube or something like that. Blase, blase. So I was in there working on a sermon, um, another Esau sermon. And my wife comes in, and then I go in there, and then he throws up again. I think she said he threw up two times when she was there. Now she was only coming home to get her smoothie. So he throws up again like, dang, you must be sick or something going on or whatnot. We trying to figure out whether he ate something, something wrong or whatever. So I'm in there doing my sermon and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, you know, my, at the time we don't, we don't know what's going on. I'm like, my stomach, my stomach is, is, is feeling kind of funny or whatever. But I ate that, well, I, ate, I had the smoothie, and then I had some uh, some oatmeal. So I'm like, maybe the combination didn't go too well for whatever reason, because usually that's what I have. I have some, I have a smoothie, and then I have some oatmeal, because usually my mother-in-law, she makes oatmeal every morning. That's what she likes, she likes oatmeal. And um, so I'm in there doing my sermon and stuff like that, and it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, I'm like, and something ain't, some, you know, something ain't right or whatever. So I'm thinking like, I said, well, what did he eat? What did we eat? What was the the common factor? So the only thing we had was the oatmeal and the smoothie. Both my son, we had oatmeal and smoothie. David, he had, I think he had uh, just the, um, the oatmeal. I don't think he had the smoothie. My wife, she had the she had the smooth, but she didn't have the oatmeal. So she came back and we was talking to her. Well, I was talking to her, excuse me. I was talking to her and stuff. I'm like, I said, I said, maybe you cross contaminated something or whatever. And she was like, no, I'm making sure I wash my hands, blase, blase. And I said, well, it had to be, it had to be something or whatever. And I said, then we started talking about what we all had. Come to find out that my mother-in-law, she didn't have the smoothie which she usually does but she had the oatmeal so it was the smoothie we figured out it was a smoothie and what was it about the smoothie that made us sick like mom would say it was like almost like a, a a mini form of poisoning good thing my son he you know he had threw up any blue diaper out whatever um elderberry May say what I take elderberry. You saying we can't? I can't have elderberry. No, it wasn't the elderberry. We did not know this about elderberry. And I I take fault for that because I didn't know. It was it was ignorance on my part. I'm thinking like, well, it's it's a berry. Um, I had no problem with it before, so let's not let it go to waste. When you cook the elderberry, we drink tea. When you drink the tea, it's not a problem. But when you take it and then you use those berries. And you use it in high quantities because we have a whole bunch of people and everybody drinks tea in there. Both my son drink tea, I drink tea, and so on and so on. The cyanide in there released 
at a high level. And so when we mix it in the smoothie, it, act, it acted like a, 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 a deuteritic or whatnot. But it was more so on the poisoning side because the cyanide levels were higher than what they were supposed to be. Um, and then she looked it up and she said that, well, she looked at every ingredient that was in there and she was like, well, I know it can be this. And that's what it was. When you, if you um, eat the berries, I'm assuming, I don't know if you, if it's, if you eat them raw, most people don't eat elderberries raw, but um, when you cook them and it, if they're in a high concentration, they have a high cyanide level that's higher than it normally would be. Now, a lot of your fruits and everything, the seeds and other, they got cyanide. So you're straight on that. So that's not the problem. It's when it's in a high level and because we have boiled it, it was in such a high level. I'm like, well, didn't you put the elderberries in there before? And she's like, no, this is the first time. So I didn't know. I was telling them to put the berries in there because I don't want them to go to waste because elderberries is expensive. Not realizing that it released such a high level of, of cyanide that it was pretty much concentrated and we were drinking it. You could say it was, it was like that straight drop. We were drinking it raw. Cause we were putting it in the smoothie. The smoothie, you know, it ain't nothing but a whole bunch of mixed up stuff or whatever. It's gonna process fast. And that's why we were getting, well, we had gotten sick. So um, I tried to finish my sermon after the fact and I was sitting there and I had the earphones in and I couldn't do it. So I went and laid down and it was just like, I'm say like, uh, we're gonna say like, one o'clock, maybe twelve, and I'm just not getting up. Um, it's like eight, eight something right now. I just got up not too long ago. I was out. I was out. Your brother, your boy. Yeah, that that stuff had me messed up. And then <laughs> I didn't have to use the bathroom, but I had to pass gas, and it didn't feel right. And yeah, I had to hold my cheeks because I'm like, oh, oh. To hold my cheeks because when it's when the gas started to come out but you're gonna say it wasn't gas it wasn't gas um but you know i made it to the bathroom and i'm straight now I'm about to go get me some uh some chili and you're like you just ate i mean you just got sick and you want to get some chili brother yeah i'm gonna be some chili with um a sweet potato make me a sweet potato chili uh well sweet potato with chili i should say but i'm straight now you know it was just it was just that so that's just fair warning for those who don't know. Um, drink the tea and also drink the tea in moderation. Everything should be in moderation. But once you once you have gotten the tea and everything out of, it, out of it, discard those berries because yeah, they can have you messed up. Didn't know, now I know. But <clears throat> now what I really wanna talk about, and this shouldn't be too long, probably is the same length as or shorter of what I'm speaking about eight minutes in yeah so we probably be at like a 20 minute mark I don't know um y'all give me a second because I literally just woke up not too long ago people talk about the ancestors crying out the ancestors speaking out to them and I want to give you the revelation that the Lord gave to me about what's really going on it is not, and it's interesting we're talking about food, is not the ancestors crying out, calling out to them to do these different things that they're saying. One, it's unclean spirits. Because if these spirits were clean, then they wouldn't be leading them astray. But hey, it is what it is. But two, which ties in with one, because the spirits, they're trying to feed off the blood. It's the blood of the ancestors that is crying out. It's the blood of the ancestors. Now, I'm using the term ancestors generically so we can speak the language, right? Do you remember what happened with Cain and Abel? Of course, everybody does. But do you remember what the scriptures say? It says, the blood of Abel cried out, cries out from the ground. His blood, even though Abel was dead, his blood was still crying out. And the Bible tells us, the Holy Scriptures tell us, 
that life is in the blood. This is why on Judgment Day, nobody will be able to say what they did or didn't do because everything is literally recorded in your blood. Your whole life is recorded in your blood. Everything you're going to do before you do is technically already recorded in your blood. Everything you do in between that, whether it's written or not written, is recorded in your blood. So when you come to this earth, your beginning and your end is already written in your blood of when you're going to die. And everything else in between is pretty much the chapters of the book. So, <clears throat> if Abel's blood cries out, and we know life is in the blood, and we know what we just, we understand what we just said. What about all the innocent blood that's been shed? What about all the wicked blood that's been shed? This blood is crying out. And they say, well, how is it crying out? Well, think about this. Remember I told you that we say you are what you eat. And that's partly true. You are what you eat when what you eat is greater than you. Let me explain. Let me say it one more time. You are what you eat <clears throat> when what you eat is greater than you. If you eat chicken and the chicken, which is a beast, is greater than you, then you become what you eat. If you are greater than what you eat, then what you eat becomes a part of you. Christ is greater than us. So Christ consumes us. We're surrounded by him. We're enshrouded in him. We are his body. So we become him. You see what I'm saying? Sons of God. He's the son of God. We are sons of God, children of God. So if you eat chicken and the chicken is greater than you, then you become what you eat. Because most people don't have the spirit, they become what they eat. And if you become what you eat because what you're eating is greater than you, then you become and take on the very thing that's in what you have eaten. Let me break it down one more time. <clears throat> We're going to take KFC chicken, for example. We know they chicken, you know, I know some of y'all eat KFC, but hey, KFC chicken ain't the best chicken if you're going to get some chicken because of what they what they do to their, to their chickens and everything. So <clears throat> these chickens are genetically modified to grow a certain way, right? And they feed these chickens certain things. When Adam and Eve fell, they fell under the authority of the serpent. Adam and Eve was up here, right? They sinned and they fell, not in the sense of how Satan fell, but fell from the state they were in down here, right? So that would put the serpent above them so that means that everybody that come from Adam and Eve would be servant to the serpent, doing what the serpent says to do, which is what the Bible teaches us. That you knows saying, even though we didn't come to do that, we still were children of disobedience. So <clears throat> God made the serpent the you know it says the less of the less creatures. So if that's the case, if God made the serpent less than the less creatures when he did what he did, he was cursed above every creature on the earth, right? He was way down here. You, even the cattle was above him. So the serpent way down here, right? Adam and Eve were up here. They say we got the cattle and everything right here. You got the dogs and everything, right? The serpent is right here. Adam and Eve was up here. So then Adam and Eve, they come down here so when Adam and Eve did what they did in essence we were made less than the devil himself which is exactly what you're seeing with the people and how they are how they're reacting and uh you know to different things uh the fruit they're bringing forth because people are doing stuff worse than they're doing things that are that are that make that we say make satan blush um <clears throat> So when you are at that level, 
the bottom of the bottom. And you eat a creature that's above you. Let's say a chicken, because a chicken would be above most of mankind. They don't see it that way. That's why they pe that's why they treat people as 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 beasts, because that's how they see people. They see people as beasts. They don't see them as as people. Um, the chicken is above you. If you down here, you still in the state of of sin. The chicken is above you. Now the chicken has been genetically modified and all type of things done to it. So you eat the chicken, but you're less than the chicken because you're lower than the serpent. Everything that chicken has eaten, everything that chicken has done, you end up becoming. So when they pray over these animals, I ain't talking about pray like P-R-E-Y, but P-R-A-Y. They offer these animals to their gods. And a lot of these animals, they have sins on them. A lot of you don't, don't know that. I talked about this before. Remember the uh, the scapegoat, which is where we get that from. They used to take the goat, right, or the ram, and the priest used to put his hands on it, right, and all the sins of Israel would be in that one animal, and they had to be half my strong to lead that animal out into the wilderness because he he was gone. He the animal was, was mad. Now, if somebody caught that animal. And then they end up eating it. Then guess what happens? All the sins that are in that animal, that person ends up taking on. Because most likely, they're not going to be greater than that animal. Even though they slay that animal, that scapegoat, they're most likely, in the spiritual sense, not greater than that animal. So all the sins in the animal, they end up taking on, which drives them crazy. Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. Even, even when you cook that blood out, there's still some type of liquid in there. And liquid contains life. Water contains life. So that's part of the reason why God said that you ain't supposed to eat blood or drink blood. Because when you're taking in the blood in that form, oh, it's, it's pure. And then you're going to take in everything that it's in that blood. That's why I don't eat no raw steak. I ain't never been a, you know what I'm saying? If I eat something raw, it's fruits and vegetables. I ain't even eat no raw meat. Blood and, oh, that's not blood. It's, I forgot what they call it. That's blood. I don't care what y'all say. That's blood. I'm going to obey the spirit. I ain't studying what these heathens are talking about. That's what heathens do. Oh, I eat my steak raw. Well, you're practicing in a heathen, heathenistic practice. What you going to do about it? Stop saying you believe the Bible. And then you're over here getting uh getting offended when you are corrected i don't i don't do that blood bloody meat and everything some of y'all do some of you maybe black and you do that it is what it is go take it up with god um that's why in the book of revelation it speaks about that he had power to give life into the image of the beast well if he had power to give life into the image of the beast and god says that life is in the blood christ is the image of of the the father and we are the image of christ meaning that we are also the image of the father of the godhead then the antichrist would be the image of his father which would be satan and then you have all the children after the fact made in his image through his blood his life his spirit you see what I'm saying? So, if you're eating this chicken and you are less than the chicken because you're not born again, this is why the Bible says that the food is sanctified by the prayer. People talk about, you know, oh, pork and, and this and that and, and you ain't supposed to eat this. All of it is corrupt. All of it is corrupt. Oh, brother, you eat pork? I'm not going to sit and say I ain't no pork. I ain't gonna sit here and say I ain't no pork in the last year. But is is I go to the store and I'm gonna buy some pork? No, I'm gonna go I want some fruits and vegetables. My main meal that I eat is I eat a salad every for dinner I eat a salad. I can eat a salad and that could be my dinner. And sometimes you know what I'm saying, I well right now, you know, I'm making my fish and stuff like that, and I put it in there or I may eat it separately. So it's not like, oh, I'm eating I'm eating pork and I'm going to the store, you know, but 
the point that ain't the point. Cause y'all know how I eat. I eat pretty healthy. And I, I pay for it literally when it comes to the dollar bill, as we say. Uh because most people they don't realize that eating healthy, it takes discipline. Cause when you go in that store and you didn't bought a handful of things and you spent fifty, sixty dollars, or you going to buy something to make one meal and you didn't spend all this all this money to feed your family. Yeah, it gets old pretty fast, but it takes discipline to do that. In comparison to, I'm going to go buy me some hamburger helper and making me a quick meal that's going to last a long time. So I don't want to hear nothing. But, um, so yeah, I've had pork in the last in the last year. I probably had pork in the last six months, just being honest. But it's not something I eat on a regular basis. But the point is, all the food is tainted. The chicken, y'all talk about the pork, but the chicken, what they're doing with the chicken, it's just as bad as the pork. You're telling me that some organic pork that y'all say that y'all won't eat or claim you won't eat, because most y'all niggas be lying. Come on, you don't eat no pork. A lot of foods that you eat got pork in it, but hey. You're telling me that a organic pig that's raised the right way, fed the right things, like how Canada does their animals, is worse than a genetically modified chicken that's pumped full of steroids to grow faster than what it's supposed to grow. M make that make sense. If that's the case, then both of them unclean. But y'all still be tearing that GMO chicken up. Because you, you don't be buying no dang uh, organic chicken, or organic cuts of meat. Most of y'all don't. Some of you do. That's why the Bible tells you that if you can't eat it in the faith, then don't eat it. So, all the food is pretty much tainted. Organic don't even really mean organic, what you think it means. They got their definition of organic. So that's why God created the body that created the body the way he created because he knew what was going to be going on. If he didn't create us the way that we are created, man, we would have been dead. We would have been dead because the food that we eat, even the healthy food, you're still not getting enough nutrients really. Um, that you that you need but you are because our dna isn't as strong as it used to be so it kind of like offsets itself if y'all get what i'm saying but <clears throat> going back to what we're talking about with that scripture that's why the bible tells us that it's sanctified by prayer it's made clean by prayer because even though that may be a GMO, and I ain't saying I ain't never ate no GMO chicken. I'm not finna sit and say that. I ain't saying I ain't never ate no GMO chicken in the last in the last uh, uh, month. Cause I'm not finna sit and lie and say, yeah, every cut of meat I buy is the top quality best I can buy. Every chicken I get is the best chicken I can get. I'm not gonna sit and say that. Sometimes I go to Kroger's or sometimes I go to Walmart and I get that rotisserie chicken. Now I know it ain't the best chicken. Do I get it every time? No, I get. I try to get the the better quality, but even when I do get those foods that are of lesser quality that may or may not be GMO, because I'm eating it in faith, and I'm greater than what I'm eating. The food is sanctified. That's why I pray, Lord, thank you for this food we're about to receive. May it provide nourishment for the spirit, soul, and body, and may everything else be expelled. It's pretty much self-explanatory. I want the body to put it out. I want it to stay in there. Um, so I'm greater than the chicken. So the chicken becomes one with me. And I don't become what the chicken has, what the chicken was or what the chicken has eaten or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so when a person isn't greater than what they're eating, and you can, you can, you can, let me, let me back. Let me drop this wisdom on YouTube. I want to make sure I, I say all this. Even with vegetarians, vegans, you can see they take on the mindset of these fruits and vegetables, but fruits and vegetables, they grow in the ground, right? And they absorb water. They grow in the dirt. This land is polluted with violence and blood blood has been shed so those fruits and vegetables they're absorbing all those nutrients those minerals from 
that person that deteriorated and went back to the ground. So when they're eating these fruits and vegetables and they're vegan or vegetarian, and they're not greater than these fruits and vegetables, then what ends up happening? The same thing. They take on a more, it's more docile. It's not, it's not as aggressive as like, you know, as a person that's eating a lot of meat and everything, but they still take on that blood. They still take on the memories that are in that blood that they're absorbing through the food. So rather it's with the fruits and vegetables or rather it's with the meat, just with the meat, they become and they are more aggressive. They're more aggressive, but it, it all depends on, really all depends on the source of the food and what type of prayers have been prayed over um, these animals are over this over this food You know what type of spirit is over it Then you have the spirit because the person is living and they take in the eating this food So the unclean spirits they're feeding off of that So in essence they're feeding off of the blood which came forth To help you create blood from the food that you're eating that was tainted with the blood and the sins of the people that they end up taking in. So when people are talking about the ancestors are crying out and these voices they're hearing is because of what they are eating and they are not greater than what they are eating. And you have all these unclean spirits coming in and feeding off of that. That's why you see certain foods associated with certain gods. Because there's, uh, there's, there's power in everything. There's power in everything. Beer is powerful. Where's beer come from? Different types of grain. Grains. So you got different type of beers that have different type of grains and they have power. You got honey, you got Coors Light, you got uh, 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 Michelob, Ultra Michelob. You got all the different different uh, types of, of beer to have different grains. And these are multi-million dollar companies. And then you have, in, have the people drinking the beer and everything getting drunk. So the now it's just spiritual connection for the spirits to come in through drunkenness based off of some grain. You see what I'm saying? So... <clears throat> Again, when they're talking about that the ancestors are are crying out and all these different things, that's what's really going on. And these folks are out here praying over this food and they're putting curses on this food, offering it to their gods, which is what the Bible talks about um, in regards to food and stuff like that. And these people don't realize that they're taking on the sins that is in this food, rather it's you know animals, rather it's fruits and vegetables. And at the end of the day, what ends up happening is, even if they're vegetarian, they're they end up being like like cannibals, because all that blood they're taking in from the ground that's been shed that's crying out through them. So then they're in a perpetual state of confusion, a perpetual state of, of of lunacy because these people have died these people have died and a lot of people that have died they're wicked and they rejected Christ and then you got these spirits coming in and so the spirits are operating acting like yeah we're the ones giving you these revelations which they are giving them these revelations these unclean spirits but in combination with that, because the spirits are feeding off the blood, because they're feeding off the people. So that these spirits can become more and more powerful. But, meaning these unclean spirits can uh, become more and more powerful. Using the people as living sacrifices. Just like we're supposed to be a living sacrifice. Meaning that our life is dedicated dedicated to, to Christ and what, we, and what we do. On the flip side, their lives are dedicated to their gods. So, <clears throat> we're 29 minutes in. I said about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, let me get to this store before it get too late. But y'all think about that. So, when they talk about these ancestors, speaking to the ancestors, they ain't speaking to the ancestors. It's just that they've taken in the blood 
of these ancestors and with their spirit, meaning a person's spirit, it acts as a conduit, a conduit, you know, uh, um, you know, like dealing with electricity. And these unclean spirits, they're guiding them and leading them into the paths of unrighteousness. And I can get deeper with it, but I ain't gonna hold y'all up too long. And plus, I gotta give me something in my system. Turn this oh, no, I can't see nothing. But uh, y'all have a blessed day. God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated, it is declared.